What if you could eat a bunch of cookie dough and it just like would never absorb? It's like you got to taste it and enjoy it, but it never actually went anywhere. I know that's a little bit or a lot of an exaggeration, but it's sort of the context of the cookie dough that I'm making today. Okay, so it's a low carb, keto friendly cookie dough, but leveraging ingredients that don't really break down. Now, you'll see what I mean by that, okay? I'm gonna talk about specific resistant starches that resist breakdown, so actually can feed our gut microbiome. And I'm also gonna talk about some particular kinds of alternative sweeteners that occupy the same receptors as sugar, or the same transporters as sugar, so it makes it so that, well, your body thinks it's having sugar. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, let's break it down. So we're gonna make some cookie dough. This is one of the simplest recipes that's out there. Let's just go ahead and break it down. We've got almond flour, one cup of blanched almond flour. Go for blanched, okay? That's gonna have none of the skin, so you're not getting the phytic acid, you're not getting the stuff that's going to make it hard to absorb. So this way you're just getting the almond flour. But rather than just using a bunch of almond flour, I like to mix the flours that I use because the omega-6 content of almonds is pretty high. And yeah, you know, you're having a treat now and then it's all good but I like to mix it up. So in this case, I have a half a cup of coconut flour. Now in the keto world, people ask, is coconut flour actually keto friendly? It is, okay? If you have a ton of it, sure, but the fiber content is super high. Okay, so if I look at this, my coconut flour is going to be nine grams of carbohydrates, five of which is fiber. It's only four grams of net carbs in a couple of tablespoons, and I'm only having a half a cup, so it's not much at all. Then, here's what's cool. So I'm gonna put all these dry ingredients in in a minute and then we're just gonna add some coconut oil, some other stuff and mix it up and it's gonna be just a no-bake cookie dough. But I'm using a little bit of cassava flour. So in this case, I'm using a quarter cup of cassava. Okay, tapioca is a more like, I guess you could call it almost distilled, like concentrated form of cassava, but I like the full spectrum cassava. And again, you look at the ingredients and you're like, there's 28 grams in a quarter cup, 28 grams of carbs, that's absurd. Well, cassava is largely what is called resistant starch, okay? Now, resistant starch means that we lack the ability to break it down. So it stays within our gut, and to some degree it sort of ferments, but rather than fermenting, it's feeding some of the microbes within our gut. It's feeding the microbiome, contributing to more short-chain fatty acid production. So in a lot of ways, it acts like a fiber in the body, not in the sense that it makes you poop, but in the sense that it's acting like a fiber that's feeding our gut microbiome. So by adding this in there, I'm adding an element that is indigestible, slowing down some of the absorption of even some of the fats. Okay, so you can go like two tablespoons all the way up to like a quarter cup of that. Now we get into the interesting stuff though. Okay, and this is where it's gonna get really fun. Okay, in this case, I have pure allulose. And you might be wondering how much allulose? Really use it to your liking. Okay, allulose is 70% as sweet as sugar. So if we were to use a cup of sugar, you'd probably end up using a little more than a cup of allulose because it's not quite as sweet as sugar, which is what I like about it. Because allulose, unlike some of these other sweeteners, isn't ridiculously hyper sweet, triggering this dopamine response. It's still what is called a monosaccharide, which means it's a very similar molecular structure to fructose. Now there was a study that was published in the journal Metabolism with allulose, really wild stuff. I'm just gonna clean up a little bit here while I talk. Okay, we found that when subjects consume 25 grams of allulose, when they measured their exhaled gases, it demonstrated that their body didn't even register it as like a carbohydrate. It didn't register it at all. Like it was, and then they further tested and they found that basically allulose comes out to having 0.4 calories per gram. Compare that to sugar, which has four calories per gram, right? So it actually has a couple calories. It's not a quote unquote zero calorie sweetener, but I think that makes it a more real food. There was also a study that was published in the journal Foods that measured fructose. Okay, so fructose, when it was in hepatocytes and liver cells, it remained about 50% intact after 240 minutes. Allulose remained intact 95%. 95% intact for 240 minutes, meaning it didn't even really break down in a liver cell, meaning it never really registered that it was a carbohydrate. And then the, probably the coolest thing is the study that was published in the journal Pharmacology and Therapeutics that found that allulose occupies the same receptor, GLUT5 transporter, that would normally take sugar out of the intestine. So basically, your body thinks it's having sugar and it occupies that receptor, which therefore, if you were to consume sugar along with allulose, they would be competing for the same receptor, potentially bringing blood sugar down. That is really earth shattering stuff, like super cool. So anyway, okay, so we've got the flour, we've got the sweetener in there. Now we add a couple of other things. And this is where you can get a little bit more, uh, I don't know, just go by taste. 
What I have is I have some sugar-free maple syrup. Now, what I would recommend is use one that has a little bit of soluble corn fiber as long as it's non-GMO. Okay, I'm using a couple tablespoons. It's just gonna give it some good flavor. Soluble corn fiber is also, even though it sounds bad because it has corn in it, and you know, generally I would wanna stay away from that, but if you're kind of torn between like heavy, heavy erythritol versus a little soluble corn fiber, the soluble corn fiber is still, by Food and Drug Administration standards, a demonstrable fermentable food, which means that it is going to change your exhaled gases, proving that it is actually a fiber, not synthetic. Before we add the coconut oil, let me go ahead and like tell you about these guys. This is a company called Good Sam, okay? All allulose sweetened products. So the chocolate chips that I have here are allulose sweetened. We're talking organic cacao, we're talking allulose, we're talking cocoa mass, nothing else, no other filler sweeteners, okay? No weird stuff, we get nothing else to kind of round out the flavor, like we've got pure allulose. So these chocolate chips are by far the best chocolate chips that are out there. Like the nice thing with allulose is because it doesn't ferment, you don't get that bloating. Now, I don't eat a ton of peanuts on keto, but I gotta tell you, these Good Sam peanuts, if you wanted to make this like peanut, but like, I don't know, peanut, peanut butter cookie kind of stuff, like you can add these. These are allulose chocolate coated peanuts. So I'm gonna add those in too. So I've got chocolate chips and some peanuts. And then if you like cashews, I don't do cashews a whole lot, but they have these cashews that you could add into the mix too. So you wanna check out Good Sam. They're totally regeneratively farmed. So completely sustainable, all regenerative food, super awesome company, but allulose sweetened, which means it's, I don't know, it's just totally awesome on keto. So there is a link down below if you wanna try their chocolate chips to get them through Thrive Market. Okay, Good Sam is awesome, but I think the best place to get them is through Thrive Market. And if you use the link down below, you can save 25% off of Thrive. So Thrive Market is just an awesome place to get Good Sam. So again, you got their chocolate covered peanuts, chocolate covered cashews, straight up chocolate chips with like nothing else in them. It's so simple and clean. Okay, so now we move on. This is where, again, there's a lot of different variables here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with about two heaping tablespoons of coconut oil. Okay, and then I'm just gonna mix this stuff all together. I may have to add more coconut oil as we go. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's add a little bit more. You can already see where this is going. So the nice thing about adding the cassava in there too, well, now my hands are a mess, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and let's get one more gross spoonful with my gritty hands here. Probably gonna need a good amount, looking at how big of a batch I'm making here. Let's go ahead and add a bunch. That's gonna be like three more tablespoons. Now, you want the coconut oil to be semi-soft. One of the things that you can add in there is also going to be coconut butter if you wanted to kind of thicken it up and get a little bit of a different flavor. One of the things I like to do is I like to roll it up into these little balls. Again, and then you can refrigerate it afterwards. Remember that you know they're still fairly calorically dense, so you don't wanna have these massive cookie dough balls. But you can also just put this in a tub and just eat it by the spoonful. I mean, you don't have to Oh my gosh. Haha. <laughs> so good. What in the world? This is perfect. You've got the perfect combination of coconut flour with a good amount of fiber. The fiber alone is going to be powerful for the gut. You've got almond flour, which is giving you the fats. Then you have, of course, your cassava, which is giving you the resistant starch, making it so you're getting a good microbiome, short chain fatty acid effect, also kind of limiting some of the absorption there. Then you have these sweeteners that we've just talked about to the world's end. Then you have a little bit of that maple flavor, but it just, the coconut oil, not to mention all the benefits that come from there. Good quality saturated fat, monolaurin, lauric acid, so it's a C12 carbon chain, 12 carbon chain saturated fat, which is very, very good when it comes down to not just the immune system, but also gut health as well. Do not bake these. If you bake them, they will melt. Okay, there's no leavening in it, there's no egg, so the coconut oil is just gonna melt. This is designed to be cookie dough. The idea is whether you wanna roll it into a ball or you just say, screw it, it straight up. That's how it works. So a big thank you to Thrive Market. Big thank you to Good Sam for making this happen. Don't forget to try these guys out. Even if you just eat a handful of them, they're so good. Link down below in the description and I will see you tomorrow. Mm. I gotta go easy on that.